NASCAR on Fox is brought to you by Ford. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Nice to have you with us from Martinsville, Virginia. Today's aerial coverage provided by Budweiser. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to win the back-to-back -back races, and that's the, uh, the Fox compound uh, as we get a look at just outside the track that they began racing in the late 40s here, one of the uh, smallest tracks and oldest on the uh, NASCAR circuit. Jeff Hammond, lots of the green flag racing, only two cautions uh, so far, and a guy who's one of five drivers from the state of Virginia, Elliot Sattler, has uh, has never done well here and has hopefully said, look, this is a tough place for me to drive, but he's, he's doing okay today. It really is, Chris, and we talked to Elliot earlier this week, and he openly says, I don't like Martinsville. I've never been good here. And as a matter of fact, this is the first race he's ever qualified for. He's been credited one time for starting 36th, but believe it or not, he qualified 37th, and because somebody was uh, basically, you know, disqualified, he got moved up into the field. So this is kind of like a really good start for these guys right now. That's the way he used to be all the time. Like, I, I can't stand it, but they're having a very solid run right now. He's uh, running currently, you know, 13th, but that's a big improvement for him. Yeah, his 150th uh, career start. And, and also Kevin Harvick, who was second last week, kind of lost in the shuffle of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s win with the yellow line controversy. And, and Harvick uh, hoping to get a big win and moving up here. Yeah, he really is. He started way back in the back also. Been very smooth. And I really kind of believe that, you know, yesterday's truck race where he finished third, he maybe got some experience in that. And right now, his truck's looking very good. Again, starting way back. You see right there the RPM sweep dropping all the way down to 4,500 and up over yep. 9,000 RPM. So you see a lot of RPM range here when you come to a place like Martinsville. And that's why it's so hard on the engines as well as the rear gearing and as far as concerned. He's being challenged right now by Kenny Strader right. outside. And, you know, uh, Larry and Daryl have talked about it. The cars go up to, what, 115 miles per hour on the straights here, and then they have to come down to about 50 or 55 miles per hour in the turns. That's where you use a lot of braking getting down in the corner so the guy that can get, down, get, it, get his car slowed down but yet not burn his brakes up. I mean, that's very important. And we're getting a look at the uh, speed right now. Again, Dale Earnhardt. Junior, the leader, we mentioned in the pre-race uh, show that he has never led in points. In fact, 67 different drivers have led points dating back to 1949, and a junior finished eighth. That was as high as he's been up as high as second. But certainly, if he would win today, depending upon points leader Matt Kenseth, he could possibly take over the points lead. And his short track program has really come a long way. Two top fives here in the last year. Yeah, it really has. And that was one thing that you, everybody was kind of wondering about whether he'd ever figure out how to drive a short track. But last year, he showed a lot of people that, hey, he can get around a short track like Mark good at Bristol, as well as uh, you see right there, the 15 car Michael Walton, one of his teammates, is trying to get around Robbie Gordon to get up and get an opportunity to get his lap back. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now is doing what he needs to do to get himself in the position to win his first Winston Cup championship. Rusty Wallace with the most uh, wins uh, at this track uh, of any active driver running second. Jeff Gordon third. Let's go back upstairs and rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Jordan. Thanks, Chris. You saw our Fox compound. Uh, Jennifer Wells runs the office trailer there. and. Whenever we've got a problem, it's Jennifer, can you help me with? And she always can. Happy birthday, and happy birthday to Steve Burns tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and uh, see, my sister Carolyn was a uh, birthday this week. Uh, my niece uh, Alicia this week. Uh, last week was Buffy, Michael's wife's birthday. A lot of birthdays this past week. Mr. France was about a week ago. Happy birthday to everybody had a birthday this past week. What do you say about that? I'd say that's a lot of birth. That's a lot of candles. It is. A lot of fire extinguishers. Happy birthday to you. I'm not sure if it's Kenny Wallace's birthday, but he had, he was the fastest car in practice yesterday, and right now he is 19. He might uh, seconds back. He might be like I was. I was the fastest truck in in a practice before we qualified, and I said, "Ooh, I shouldn't have done that." Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody says, "Oh, you're gonna win the pole." You know, Darrell, Ricky Craven. He I believe he he may not be up there leading this race right now, but I, he may be our sleeper. I think just as he was two years ago here when he won this race a year and a half ago. We listened in under caution to Craig. You saw when this thing came to life, and I think that was the uh, tire pressure. But the first 15, 20 laps of that run uh, was pretty sloppy in the middle. You know, once the pressure came up, still had to uh, break straight and get in. And my biggest problem was getting in. I, I cannot afford to uh, get any tighter in the middle. What I, what I noticed yesterday, Larry, is even when those pressures were way down at eight and a half pounds in the left rear tire, the car still drove, or the truck yesterday drove very good. And I could tell almost like he flipped the switch when those pressures had started to build 
and then the things that get too much air in them, that's when you get the wheel spin. And once again, I want to explain why they start the pressure so low. If the car is better when the pressure is built up, why don't you start them there? It's because you build up so much air pressure here with the way the heat is, especially with brake heat, that you have to start them down or it'll build so much air pressure over a long run, you'll hear the driver say, my tires feel like basketball bouncing. Yeah, the, the brakes in the front cause the front to get hot, and then the wheel spin in the rear, all that gear causes the rear to get hot, and that's where the buildup comes from. Well, Darrell, we're back to where we were after a long run of green racing. The leader, in this case, the eight, Dale Jr., in the heavy race traffic. Yeah, you're, you're, you're between a rock and a hard place. You want to get by these guys, but you don't want to beat your front end up. You know if you run in the back of somebody, close up your brake ducts or your radiator opening, the thing will start running hotter, you'll, you'll lose your brakes. So you've got to be somewhat patient, even though your crew's telling you that 24 car is coming, he's closing. Pick it up if you can. He's working on Joe Nemechek right now, who's the 23rd place car. All right, Junior's the leader, then Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and in fifth place, Jimmy Johnson. Here's Steve. Well, crew chief Chad Canals. Chad, what is Jimmy saying about his race car? Right now, it's a little tight in the center, it's a little loose off, but I'll tell you what, Jimmy's doing a great job with the low Chevrolet. Our plan was just trying to hang out in the top 10 to the last 100 laps, and kind of what we're doing, we're going to make small adjustments on it, try to stay on top of the track, so uh, we'll kind of wait and see what happens. And I tell you, you have to be so careful to try to fix what Chad Canal said that car is because it's tight, not turning in the middle and then loose off. If you make it turn better in the middle, sometimes it'll be looser off. If you try to make it tighter on the exit of the corner, it'll make it too tight in the middle. A lot of times, though, Daryl, if you make it fix the center, it helps the exit. Yeah, and you can do a lot with brake adjustment. We've got a brake bias valve in there that you can take front brake away and, and put more on the rear. Sometimes that'll help you get the car turned a little bit. But, Larry, one thing that I'm worried about with so much green flag racing already, I got a feeling that before the day's over, we're going to see some guys with some brake problems. And there you see Jimmy Spencer in that seven car, remember, running fifth not that many laps ago, had the gas can stuck in the car, left pit road. Here he is about to go a lap down, Mike. Left pit road and could have been the leader. Speaking of brake, we'll take one right here. We'll spell it a little different, but the effect is the same. We're going to stop coverage. Reset and come right back to Martinsville. Hey guys, this is Dylan Hart Jr. I want to say hey to all the troops overseas, all the guys. You're doing a great job. We're tuning in, we're watching, we're real proud of you. We're really excited. Can't wait for you to get back home and get back to living. Thank you. 190 laps completed in Martinsville, Virginia. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the leader over Rusty Wallace by nine-tenths of a second. Jeff Gordon right back of Wallace, Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart. The top five, Ricky Craven, Ken Schrader. And Gordon to the outside of Rusty Wallace for second place. And goes on. It's right along with our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the fourth different driver to lead this race today. And uh, having a look at that roll bar there, Matt Yoakum, who's Trevor? Go there. Go there. One of our drivers Clear. gives Clear. so much of their time and money quietly to different charities. And Dale Jr., one of his biggest charities, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, yesterday he met little Trevor Lasardi from Wake Forest, North Carolina. He signed a number of items, and Trevor said, well, Dale, I'd like to autograph something to you. He gave him a little Trevor license plate. Said, you know what? I'll put that in my race car tomorrow for good luck. Certainly paying off today. So far, so good. And you know something, Mike? Uh, Dale Jr. gave a, a good uh, welcome there to all of our troops over in, in the Middle East there. I am so impressed. I mean, watching this thing on the television and watching the dedication and the commitment of those men and women over there fighting for our country and the intelligence of all of it. I mean, it's such a, it makes me proud when I see our guys over there working as hard and going like they are. It, it's really incredible. I agree. See, what I believe Jeff Gordon in that 24 car, it has come to life. You saw him go by Rusty Wallace just a second ago for second. Now he's all over the rear bumper of this Budweiser car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nate. 
I mean, they're running two different lines. Jeff Gordon, I've been watching him for about the last 50 or so laps. He's been hugging the bottom. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., right after that last pit stop, he was running the upper groove. There you see Jeff Gordon right to the bottom of the racetrack at both ends. Remember earlier when Gordon just waved Jr. by? Go on, go on. You lead for a while. You use up your stuff. I'll be back. He's back. He, you know, I talked to Robbie Loomis this morning about the 24 car, and they've always been happy with this car, but they said it just seems like they never could pay it off in the race. It was always a good qualifier. He sat on the pole two or three times with this car, but just never could pay it off in the race, but looking pretty good on long runs today. Sure is. Remember when our three Winston Cup champions were about to get lapped early in the race by Jeff Gordon? One of them, Bill Elliott, did, but the other two, the 18 of Bobby Labonte and the 88 of Dale Jarrett, not only were able to speed away and stay on the lead lap, but Labonte is now 10th and Jarrett 12th. Jeannie? All good preparation on behalf of Bobby Labonte. He knew there'd be a long green flag run. He planned for it in practice, posting 80 laps, the most of any car in the garage, and it is paying off now. Bobby, by the way, feeling the pressure to keep up the momentum. Yesterday, one of his good friends, David Green, won the Bush race. Last night, Bobby's nephew, Justin, you know, Terry Labonte's son, finished second at the Caraway Speedway in Asheboro, North Carolina, and to top it off, Bobby's son, Tyler, finished second last night in a quarter midget race in Ohio. The torch has officially been passed. Well, I'd say, I'll say so. That's pretty impressive. And Labonte moved up to ninth on Jamie McMurray, who is 10th. Jeff Burton and then Dale Jarrett, who's climbed right up to 12th and hung in there. We heard no early in the race. No we heard early in the race when Bobby Labonte said, hey, I'm a nice guy, but I'm not going to be a nice guy all day. Dale Jarrett's a nice guy. They drive very similar styles. But when you get ready to go a lap down, you throw that out the window and go forward. But you know, as I watch Dale Jarrett here in the UPS car, I can't help but think Richard Buck and Garth Finley comes in this week to look after this race car. Didn't have a good qualified effort because actually Dale Jarrett lost the brakes up on Friday qualified. They were about to go a lap down in less than 100 laps. Those guys had to be wondering, oh, gosh, what have I got into? Now they've rebounded up here battling to get in the top 10. They have to feel good. This is a brand-new race car, untested. Never seen a racetrack, Jeff, until they unloaded it here on Friday. Larry, one of the things right now you guys have touched on, but yesterday I think is a really good documentation that sometimes you got a better vehicle than you're really showing. You don't really want to run any harder than you need to because you don't want to use your equipment up. When all of a sudden somebody comes on the air and says, hey, the leader is only about a straightaway behind you, you've got to get up on the wheel. And I think it shows right here why these guys are champions, why they're great race car drivers. So they got up on the wheel stayed away from the leader and gave the crews an opportunity to work on their race cars and put themselves back in contention. There is a time to race, and there's a time to be a little bit patient. Well, I can put a period on it. I'm so glad I went to the spotter stand yesterday. I kept DW posted, and maybe I went a period of time and did keep him posted, and I said, the leader's at the line now. There you see the spotters. And he said, let me tell you something you can do a little better job of. Let me know when the leader's coming. It's like, wait a minute, you mean you wasn't trying until I told you that? you got to save a little bit. It wasn't showtime yet. 205 laps complete. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s lead over Jeff Gordon now to six tenths of a second. 